Good morning. Uh, I am here is uh, chapter 11 from How to Steal a Dog. We ended chapter 10 with kind of a bunch, uh, Georgina kind of regretting her idea of um, stealing the dog and just she forgot another key detail is how is she going to feed uh, Willie food and give him water. So here we go, chapter 11, let's hopefully things work out for Willie and Georgina and Toby. Hey y'all, mama called as she made her way across the parking lot toward the car, look what I got. She stuck a styrofoam box through the window. Check this out, she said. I opened the box, scrambled eggs and pancakes. They sure did smell good. And that's not all, she said, tossing a paper bag onto the back seat. Toby snatched the bag up and peered inside, then let out a whoop. Donuts, he hollered. He grabbed a powdery white donut and started eating it so fast he he choked, coughing out a spray of powder and crumbs. Ew, I said, wiping off my jeans. Mama slipped behind the steering wheel and examined herself in the mirror. This job is going to be great, she said, licking a finger and smoothing an eyebrow. The tips are really good, and I get to bring home all kinds of food. Food? Talk about good luck. Now we wouldn't have to worry about feeding Willie. I poked Toby and gave him a thumbs up. His eyebrows shot up, and he mouthed, what, at me? I flapped my hand at him to signal, signal never mind, but he wouldn't be quiet. He kept whispering, what? I shook my head and pulled an invisible zipper across my lips, which meant, hush up. I can't tell you in front of mama. But he was too dumb to figure that out. What? He said a little louder. Louder. What, what'd you say? Mama said. I pressed my foot on top of Toby's and smiled at mama in the rear view mirror. Nothing, I said. I settled back and ate some pancakes, which sure did taste good, even though they were all soggy with syrup. When I finished, I took out my notebook and wrote, save some donuts for Willie. I pushed the notebook across the seat and poked Toby. He squinted down at my note, then he grinned and said, oh, okay. What, Mama said? I jabbed my heel into Toby's foot and he hollered, ow. Mama whirled around and snapped. What are y'all doing? I slapped my hand over the note and smiled at her. Nothing. Well, don't y'all start that bickering back there, she said. Let's go find us someplace to park. I glared at Toby. We hadn't had that dog one whole day yet, and already he was acting all stupid around Mama. It would be a miracle if she didn't find out what we had done. But so far, it seemed like everything was working out good. I'd stolen Willie, no problem. I found a good place to keep him. And Mama, not, Mama had a job at a coffee shop that gave her free food. Now all I had to do was stash some of that food in my backpack for Willie. I took out my notebook and wrote April 18th in my How to Steal a Dog notes. Then I wrote step five, things to do after you have stolen the dog. Number one, be sure to act nice to him so he won't be afraid. Number two, play with him so he will like you. Three, make sure to put him in a safe place where he won't get wet if it rains. Four, tie up the rope or string so he can't run away. Five, find him some food and water. Uh-oh, water. I'd forgotten about that. But I was pretty sure that wasn't going to be a big problem. Still, I put a question mark beside that one so I would remember to figure it out. That night, it seemed like I hardly slept at all. A steady rain clattered on the roof and ran down the windows and streams. The inside of the car was so hot, I had to crack my window, and then the rain splattered my face and made my window wet. Wait, made my pillow wet. I listened to the slow, even breathing of Mama and Toby and thought about Willie. I wondered if he was scared. I wonder, was he getting wet? Was he hungry? Every time I closed my eyes, I could see his freckly face and those shiny black eyes. I could see him cock his head at me and wag his whole body the way he did. Don't be scared, Willie, I whispered into the still night air. The car windows were so fogged up I couldn't even see outside. I used my finger to write Willie on the foggy, the foggy glass. I drew a heart around it, then wiped the window clean and turned my mind to off. When I opened my eyes the next morning, I felt all fluttery and excited like on Christmas morning. Today was the day we would find the reward sign for Willie. Mama made us use the water in the cooler to brush our teeth while she was putting on her lipstick and stuff in the car. I filled an empty soda bottle with water and put it in my backpack. Then I checked to make sure I had the bag of food scraps for Willie. Yep, half, 
half a donut and some scrambled eggs. I pulled Toby close and whispered, we got to look for the reward signs today, okay? He nodded, okay. I could hardly keep myself from grinning as we made our way through the streets of Darby and on on the way to school. I sat up straight and pressed my face against the window, searching every telephone pole we passed. As we got closer to school, my excitement began to fade to disappointment. I guess my heart, in my heart, I'd known it probably too soon to find any signs. We'd, on, we'd only stolen that dog the day before, but in my mind, I had pictured signs on every pole. There, there they would be, up and down the streets of Darby, in big letters, reward. Then there would be a picture of Willie cocking his head and staring out at the world through his furry black eye patch. But what I saw outside the window that day was nothing like what I had seen in my mind. There wasn't one single sign, none, nowhere. I tried to swallow my disappointment and tell myself to be patient. The signs would be up after school for sure. Y'all go straight on back to the car after school, okay? Mama said, pulling over to the curb. We will, I said and stay there, Georgina. We will, and help Toby with this homework. I nodded and watched her drive away. Then I grabbed Toby's arm. Did you see any signs? I said, nope. Dern, I stamped my foot. Maybe, the, maybe that lady doesn't care about Willie, Toby said. I shook my head. No way, she cares. I said, who wouldn't care about a dog like that? Toby shrugged. Maybe she hasn't got any money, he said. She owns the whole street, Toby, I said. A school bus pulled up and kids came pouring out and rushing toward the front door of the school. Me and Toby pushed our way through and went inside. Listen, I said, meet me at the flagpole after school. We got to take that food over to Willie. Then we can look for reward signs. I bet they'll be up by this afternoon. Mama said we had to go, we had to stay in the car, Toby said. I rolled my eyes. She won't even know what we she won't even know what we do. She'll be in the coffee shop. I watched Toby walk away from me as he headed to toward class. His clothes were all wrinkled and his hair was long and tangled. He, he was sure a pitiful sight, and I wondered if that was how I looked. When Mr. White asked me for the millionth time if I had given those letters to my parents, I lied again. I said I had, but Mama and Daddy were real busy working and all. I told him my Daddy was going to call him any day now. Yeah, right. I thought that was a good one. I felt bad lying to Mr. White. He was the nicest teacher I'd ever had. He didn't, he didn't get mad when my science report had fried chicken grease on it. He hadn't said one word when I didn't have a costume for our play about the Boston Tea Party like all the other kids did. And he let me go to the nurse's office even when he knew I wasn't one bit sick. But when he asked me about those letters, what else could I do but lie? Luann didn't hardly even talk to me all day. I was wearing the same clothes I had on yesterday, and I thought I saw her make a face when I walked into class that morning. I thought I saw Liza poke her at recess and point at me. I thought I heard my name every time I walked by, kids giggling and whispering and all. So who cares, I told myself. I didn't care about any of those kids anymore. Maybe not even Luann. I found myself doing stuff I never would have done before we started living in a car. Stuff like I knew who made kids poke each other and laugh at me. Like I took, I took Melissa Gavin's half-eaten granola bar out of the trash and put it in Willie's food bag. And when Jake Sampson called me a garbage picker, I just kept my mouth shut and went on back to my desk like, I don't care. After school, I waited at the flagpole for Toby. Then we headed off toward the old house to check on Willie. Toby kept whining about how his backpack was too heavy and his feet hurt and all, but I ignored him. I found a plastic margarine tub on the side of the road and wiped the dirt off of it with the edge of my shirt. We can use this for Willie's water bowl, I said, tucking it into my backpack. Toby kept saying, slow down, as we made our way up the gravel road. He splashed right through the muddy puddles, not even caring about his shoes, that his shoes were getting soaked and his legs were covered in mud. But I didn't slow down. I was dying to get to Willie. I needed to see him. I sure hoped he was okay. As soon as I rounded the corner of the house, I heard a little yip from the back porch. When I saw Willie poke his head through the torn screen door, my heart nearly leaped right out of me. 
I felt so glad to see him. Right away, he started wagging his whole body like he was the happiest dog on earth. Hey there, fella, I said, sitting on the top step of the porch and giving him a hug. He licked my face all over. Are you hungry? I said. Before I could even open the bag of food, he was pushing at it with his whiskery nose. Here you go. I opened the bag and let him gobble up the eggs and stuff inside. He sure was hungry, Toby said. I rubbed my hand down Willie's back while he ate. He was a little wet and smelled kind of bad, but he seemed okay. I opened the soda bottle of water and poured some into the margarine tub. Willie went to, went to town lapping it up. We got to let him run a little bit, I said. But what if he runs away, Toby said. We'll keep the leash on him, dummy. I untied the string from the doorknob. Come on, Willie, I said. Me and Toby took turns running up and down the road. Willie ran right through puddles. Sometimes he'd stop and shake himself, sending sprays of muddy water all over me and Toby. Once in a while, he stopped to take a good long drink from a puddle, but mostly he just ran and leaped and barked a happy kind of bark. We had to run real fast to keep up with him or else he was liable to bust that string right in two. There, I said, that ought to be enough. Willie sat in the road in front of me, panting. He lifted his doggy eyebrows and watched me, he, like he was waiting for something. I knelt down and scratched his ears. Don't worry, I said. You're going to be going home real soon. He stopped panting and perked his ears up. Then he put his paw on my knee. He sure is cute, ain't he? Toby said. He sure is. I stroked Willie's paw and felt I stab, a stab inside. Was it really, really wrong to do what I was doing, or was it just a little bit wrong? I pushed Willie's paw off my knee and stood up. I had to shut those thoughts right out of my head and keep just one thought and one thought only in there. I was doing this for Mama and Toby and me, to help us have a real place to live, not a car. What was so wrong about that? He took Willie back to the porch, and I tied the string around the doorknob again. Don't worry, fella, I said. You'll be home soon, I promise. I filled the margarine tub with water again and set it on the porch beside Willie. He needs a bed, Toby said. I looked at the crummy old back porch. Toby was right. The porch was damp and dirty and covered with sticks and leaves. I should have brought a towel or something to make a bed. I felt another stab inside. I was being mean to Willie, wasn't I? We'll bring him something next time we come, I said. But then I added, if he's still there, if he's still here. Toby frowned. Why wouldn't he be here? I sighed. It sure was tiring having to explain every darn little thing to Toby. We'll be taking him back home, you idiot, as soon as we find that reward sign. Oh, yeah. I gave Willie one last pat on the head and made my way back down the rotten porch steps. I wanted to look back, but I didn't. I knew I wouldn't be able to stand the sight of that little dog watching me walk away and leave him all alone. I led the way through the bushes to the road. Behind us, I thought I heard Willie barking. I don't hear that, I told myself. I'm not mean, I reminded myself. This was a good idea and everything is going to turn out fine, I repeated in my head. I guess I was hoping that if I said those things, then maybe they would come true. No. All right, guys, and that is the end of chapter 11. Have a great rest of your day.